Chapter 88 About Physicians' Service Out of Neighbourly Love Says Cyrenius, Yes, my Lord, and most manifestly my God. Now I understand that too. Their apparent coldness, nonetheless, is love. This reminds me of the maid's legend, who through peculiar forces of nature was incomprehensibly beautiful and charming. The youths, men and old men, seeing her, soon got into a big fight to decide whose wife she would be. But the number of contestants was daily on the rise to their own destruction, since it was realised in the end that the goal would not be realised through mortal combat, the fighters finally came to an agreement, saying, This creature is not of this earth, but the high heavens and a goddess. Hence we must settle on steep sacrifices. To whoever out of the offerers she chooses to give her most beautiful hand shall henceforth possess her undisturbed. Upon this agreement, immeasurable treasures were brought from every side, and divine adulation accorded her. Adoration of this beauty reached a point where adoration and worship of the gods was set aside. Therewith the gods became furious, and made the beautiful maiden even more seductive, but also, on the other hand, made her breath so poisonous that on whosoever she breathed, even from afar, fell insensibly to the ground, remaining prostrated for hours. In addition to that, they fitted the tip of her tongue with such deadly sting that she could kill anyone who came near her mouth against her will. When a youth of bloomingly beautiful shape came along, the maiden's heart suddenly came alive. But what was she to do about loving him, since she was sure it would make the youth glow in love for her? If she turns her face towards him, then her darling falls stunned to the ground. Kissing him he will die. Out of love, therefore, she turned her face away from the youth, so he would not approach her mouth. For the sake of preventing her darling's death, she had to love him with the greatest apparent coldness. In similar fashion to this legend, the two youths also leave poor mankind of this earth with the deepest apparent coldness, knowing people could not bear the glowing love of their celestial hearts. Say I, just so indeed, with the difference that their breath is not poisonous and their tongue not provided with deadly sting, but rather that their breath vitalizes and their tongue blesses the earth. Here Boris stepped over to me again with Sarah, asking me what he really ought to do to show himself more thankful than has been the case until this overjoyous moment for the exceedingly great grace. Say I, Tell me, my friend and brother, where is the person who from their childhood would have been more favourably disposed towards me than yourself? As a boy, you were my daily companion and did for me whatever you saw in my eyes that it would please me. When you went annually with your parents to their properties in Greece, returning a few weeks later, then I was always the first you visited, bringing all sorts of good and often quite costly and beautiful things as presents, and were not cross with me for smashing the silver Diana temple you gave me with a hammer, forbidding you to ever give me such present again. After I became a youth and hardly anyone took note of me, you were the only one who remained steady. And just as you have always been so, you shall also remain. 
Therefore, with this, I only gave you a favour in return. Like a friend who was already in debt for many years. Hence make no big fuss about it. For sure have you received the most love-worthy and beautiful and spiritually awoken wife. And Sarah in yourself the best, most faithful, and in every sense the wealthiest and most highly regarded man. You shall not eternally on my part be lacking my blessing in every good respect. And besides that, you shall remain the best physician, not only in this country, but the entire world. And therewith you too, shall I presume, be able to live quite well? Notwithstanding this, never forget the poor, and not charge either money, or through any services or grain or cattle, any poor citizen, and even less any servant, for your skill in healing all sicknesses, which is not achievable to any other person in the world. But charge your skill to the big gold owners, brokers, money changers, merchants and big landlords, for whatever is justly due. For he who has and wants to live should make an offering for his life every now and then. There shall afterwards be no shortage of the poor to whom you can pass on that for which a man of property buys his life. A physician like yourself sells men life, which especially for worldly men is the greatest possession. Whence they should also have to buy it for good money and goods, and besides that there should be a person upon earth from whom one can buy life. For I say unto you, the truly penultimate and pure skill in the world, which no worldly man can learn, is to heal any kind of mental or physical illness through the word, through the will, and only sometimes by the laying on of hands, and besides, to tell the poor about the kingdom of God. At Sishar too, I awakened a physician so that he can effect quite noteworthy healings. But since he was not quite able to let go of his herbal fluids, he trails you by a long way. My disciples shall catch up with you in a few short years as well, yet not all whom you see here. But my most beloved Sarah also shall gain a skill, and namely that of a midwife, because this is a most worthy service before God, to always stand by women in great pain. And thus you two are provided for like no royal couple ever was before you. But I also advise you as follows. When someone sick comes to you, or you are called away to one, then always ask him earnestly, Do you believe that I can heal you in the name of Jesus the Saviour from the heavens? If the sick says convincingly there too, Yes, I believe, then heal him. But if he doubts, then do not heal him until he believes that you can heal him in my name. But now a word with you, Jairus, 